I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair and send him on his way. Get the picture. Welcome back. This is Andy Tube. And this is part three. Coco takes a shower. In the series of the 301A, Coco goes to the spa. After pre-treating now, I've got her in the shower. And uh, I use the shower now because I can get a hose in here and it's a better environment. If you do this on a patio or outside, that's great. Um, the crud cutter can damage plants and stuff, so or grass, so be careful of that if you choose an outdoor area. But what I want to do now is, is uh, start spraying. This is about a 25 or 30 percent solution of crud cutter mixed with just tap water. And I'm going to go back now and uh, give a, start at the bottom again and give this area a good spray. Special attentions near bushings and bearings and moving parts because that's where the the oil and grease hides over the years and the dirt settles and we're going to stay away from the paint as much as possible and don't lift it by the extension bed when, when you know when you turn it uh, do it by the main bed or, or body flip it over here now and uh, let's see if I can do the do this nose area and the crud cutter is kind of slippery you know so be careful when you're turning your machine just want to get into that handrail area I'm going to go where the terminal hole is to spray up and down to get those shafts good all those vertical shafts see if I can flip that bobbin winder around a little and let's get it a little and I'm going to spray that top end again and uh, again this first round we're concentrating more on the interior than the exterior okay and then we're going to want to finish up with the, the hook the bobbin area and the, the nose up here. You're going to do this real good if you're not taking these parts out. Okay. You can see it's getting all over the paint and the body now. So I'm going to keep that down to just a few minutes. And once I've done all that, I'm going to spray the body lightly. It doesn't take much because that grease will, and oil will come right off the paint. You can even use a weaker solution if you want. Make sure and get the, the sides down there. And the, the edges up around the light fixture. I forgot to scrub that. Oh, it's coming right off. Okay. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. So this next step, step you can skip. You can go right to spraying it with the hose. But I, I want to, uh, I want to do this just a dipper rinse because I want to try and preserve some of that water in the bucket to show you everything that came off of it. So I'm just going to do that real quick and then I'll, I'll do the normal spraying. Don't tell my wife I used her dipper, okay? <laughs> okay, let me, let me put that water aside and then I'll show you how we, we spray it off. Okay. I'm just taking a hose with a little sprayer on the end, a little valve shut off. And I 
I want to rinse it and get all that crud cutter off. Remember, it's slippery. Well, this sure beats hours with key tips and alcohol. I'll tell you that. Now, now one thing, when you're flipping this around, watch your take-up lever. Don't let it get caught and bend or anything. And watch your uh, spool pins a little bit. You don't want them to get like caught on the edge of the bucket or anything. seeing one little area up there below the shaft housing. I want to give another little squirt. Just to be sure. I don't know if that's just a, a little bit of paint or if it's uh, still grease. drying a little bit and uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in this series yet but the, my drying method uh, the hair dryer was taking too long for me so I use a leaf blower <laughs> and uh, that surprised my wife the first time she heard that in the bathroom <laughs> but <laughs> if you don't have a leaf dryer you know use a hair dryer or a high fan because you, you want to get this dry as quick as you can and then uh, we, we can start putting oil and grease on it to, you know to protect because you've stripped off all the protection all the oil and grease is gone by the way here's that can you see that I don't know how well it's going to show up but that's that first little rinse I did of how much stuff was still coming off after I pre-treated it and sprayed it and a lot went down the drain. Just amazing to me. And I've seen it a lot worse than that. You know, but why why leave all that on the machine? Right? Okay, let's see how I'm doing on time here. Okay. So I'm gonna start drying. I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to edit it because you'll, you'll get the idea. And this is a leaf blower in a bathroom, so watch your ears if you want to lower the volume or turn it off. Now's the time to do it. And you can just see how I blow dry it.
Okay, I think that will give you a good idea of how to blow dry the machine. Get it as dry as you can. You don't take five minutes or whatever it takes. And, uh, of course, after a shower and a blow dry, we got to be moisturized. So I'm going to go set up on the bench, and we're going to put the protective oil and grease. The first oil and greasing after the shower. Okay, okay so I'll be right back it's for that. now time to moisturize uh, Coco. Because we have stripped everything off of her. So we want to get grease and oil right back on her. Uh, just the initial part here. If you see some some hazing and discoloration on stuff, don't worry about that. Uh, if you do see some rust, there's a product I use called uh, The Must for Rust. It's made by Rust-Oleum, Rust -Oleum, and it's about f five or six bucks for a you know an eight ounce bottle, and you can just wipe it on with some Q-tips and wipe the rust right off. The first thing I want to do is get grease on the gear. So no oil on gears. And if we oil stuff first and we get any oil on the gear and later when we try to put grease on it, the grease is not going to stick. So I always start with the gears. And I use a product, like many do, called Tri-Flow Clear Synthetic Grease. And it comes in smaller tubes. This is a three ounce tube. Um, if you're just doing a you know, a half dozen machine, a, a, a smaller tube will, will do. And uh, I use a little inexpensive artist brush. I bought a pack of various brushes at Walmart for four or five bucks. And the one I use for grease is a little more stiff. I think it's for acrylic paint. But I'm going to just brush this grease on here. And I use a brush because m most people slather the grease on. Then it gets thrown everywhere, and any grease not on the teeth of the gears is a waste, and it just collects dirt and lint. So I take a little dab, and I apply it on about the top third of those gears. And I might do this two or three times before I'm done with the machine, but I always like to get started with a good coat right away. And I turn it up about a third of the way. So about a, I don't know, 90, 120 degrees at a time. And as you turn it, it's going to get transferred to the lower gear that it mates up with. Right? So, because it's really hard to get down to that gear and you'll probably get half of the grease on the shaft and the side of the machine and everything else. So concentrate on getting it between the teeth of those gears and then turn it. Now if your machine is so stiff that it won't turn, go ahead and put some oil in the bearings. You'll see me do this later and here and here and on the bearing up, up there by the other end of the shaft enough so you can turn it but you see it's already thrown off some of the grease so I'll just wipe it back in there and turn it it tends to throw it to the points on the smaller end of the gear because that's what mates up with the other gear get some more on here in the end, all the extra grease that slops around, we're going to wipe it off with a rag or a Q-tip. But we want to get grease on there right away to protect it and to prevent oil from getting on there. No oil on gears. Okay. And I have seen people put grease on this other parts, and I, I disagree with that. It's up to you, and it's up to them. They obviously think it's a good idea. But... Oil on bearings and bushings and stuff like that, and grease on metal gear. And I have never put anything on any plastic gear. No oil for sure, and no, no grease. So you're getting the idea here, right? 
just keep wrestling that in and spinning it and see how it wants to throw off that gear and, and scoop it up and put it back on there and just try and, try and get it on the gear as best you can some's going to get on other parts and, and we can clean that up that's no big deal it's looking pretty good now okay let's see since I got that I'm just gonna show you uh, you know whenever you're putting grease on if it's not on the gears you can just take off the excess like this turn it good turn it good so that it transfers down below I wipe some of that back on there and be careful using a cotton q-tip you don't want to get a lot of cotton particles stuck in the gear but they're really handy for wiping the excess gear off of the I mean the excess grease off of the gear I'm satisfied with that as the first greasing of the gear so I want to turn it over because I have another gear I have another gear down here on the bottom of the machine another set of gears so I want to do the same uh, greasing sorry drop my grease I want to do the same uh, greasing on these these you can get a little bit on both gears if you want And that'll just maybe help it spread around faster. And turn it. And you, you, you may be looking at these other parts now. They're kind of motley looking and things like that. As long as there's no rust formation, you're good we're going to oil all of that. We're going to put a coat of oil on all the steel. Turn it some more. Mm -hmm. see, how it, see how it tends to throw off. And this tri-flow sticks a lot better than uh, most lube. I actually found this the first time I think at a bicycle shop in, in my town and uh, they raved about it and they use it on their chains. It helps waterproof. It lasts a lot longer. These guys that BMX ride and trail ride and get in creeks and mud and they talked about you just can't buy a better grease and it has a real high temperature rating these gears will get hot when you run your machine I found that out got a nice funny looking burn one time by grabbing one so that's why uh, I bought some and then I looked around online and wow see a lot of people were using this for their machines so it sure is better than the old Singer lube Gear lube, I think. I haven't cleaned off buckets of it. So, yeah, it's looking good. Why those gears got clean, too. Woohoo! Okay. Grab my q-tip and I'm just gonna wipe off some that I got smeared around here a little bit off the face of it alrighty now let me set up here uh, for oiling and we'll get started with that uh, for the oiling now when I uh, oil for maintenance and inside the bushings and bearings and stuff I always use Tri-Flow Superior Lubricant and it has the P PTFE which is Teflon 
we got to shake it up and stuff. And all the bottles come with this cool, you know, straw that you can get where you need to get. Uh, if you have access to that, that's what I prefer. But there's nothing wrong with all-purpose uh, machine oil from Singer and uh, Lily uh, sewing oil, like a lot of the industrial shops use. They buy in big bottles of it. Uh, the purer the oil, the better. You don't want additives, because that's what what gets dries and varnishes. So what I would do is start with this um, triflow, and I want to get some, especially into those bearings and bushings. Remember, I pump cleaner in there, and we've had water in there, so I want to overflow. I want to over oil this time and uh, get it full of oil. I mean for maintenance you put like a drop you know once a week or how much you sow but since we've stripped everything I'm trying to not block the camera but, and then we'll go to our oil points um, I'll put a link to where you can download the free manual for this and it will show you all the oil points and there's some over here so metal on metal is pretty much where you oil it and uh, I like to start out with that triflow in those spots get that going in there good it's throwing off some more grease there I'm going to jam that straw right in that hole when you're oiling like this if you see a little oil hole that is where to put that straw and then the other place are just kind of like bushings and you put where the metal touches the metal okay I got started with that. Now in here I just have the Singer oil. It's pretty much pure high grade mineral oil. And I'm going to take a softer brush, the, what I call my oiling brush. <laughs> and I'm going to put oil on everything steel that I can see. If you get it on the aluminum, or if you want to do the aluminum, that's great. Put it on the back of that, but don't get any on the gears. And this is just going to be a protective coating for all the metal. Now in Arizona, you know, it's part of the Sonoran Desert, and uh, we don't, I don't get a lot of rust here because it's so dry, so very dry. But where you are in the country or the world, you could get a lot of uh, rust potential. So since we've stripped off everything, we have to replace it. And if you're going to pack up your machine and not use it, you should do this before you store it away. In Arizona, we have this phenomenon called snowbirds, where many, I mean thousands of people come to Arizona in the winter because it's mild. And they come from north, northern climes and northeast America and... Canada and places like that to spend a, a milder sunny winter and then you know they stay here for the winter and then uh, pack up and go home some of them have small condos and stuff they just keep you around but I've had them tell me that they didn't do this and they, they came back nine months later and the machine was uh, you know starting to show some rust and it was real stiff and so if you're going to put away your machine and not use it, just put a light coat of oil on everything. And that's even in a lot of the Singer manuals to do that. Okay. I got a steel head down here. Now like I said, if you want to put it on the aluminum, aluminum doesn't really rust as far as I know. But if you want to spread it all over the aluminum tube. Uh, some people do that because they say it helps prevent oxidation, you know, 
and if you'd like to do that that's fine too but start with anything that's steel okay and it doesn't take long you can see that right okay now we get this turned up and get back by the horizontal arm up here and I'm going to kind of do the same thing I'm going to start with the tri flow in the bearings and bushings and I'm going to really put a bunch uh, in here you know until I can kind of see it wants to come out because I, I stripped all that there we go. I'll come up here to that front bearing and I don't know what it is, maybe 20 drops, 30 drops, I don't know. But I want to really fill it up in case there's any of the cleaner or water left in there. And uh, you know if it if it starts leaking out of the bearings, that's that's okay. And we'll just wipe off the excess, you know. I like to get started with that. And then that, while that kind of soaks in and does its thing, I'm going to come back on the shafts. And you can use Tri-Flow on the shafts. You know, it's more expensive, but if, if that's cool for you, it's good. Don't get any on the gears. You'll get tired of hearing me say that. But all along the shafts, bushings, the outside of the bushings, any any steel part get a nice coating of fresh oil on there to protect it we'll turn that we'll get a little more nope looking good see now that a lot of that uh, funny covering will go away mm -hmm. That kind of model look and you'll see the paint might look a little dull and splotchy but we're going to use a cleaner wax and we're going to uh, you know to do a first cleaning to get any mineral deposits and fingerprints and stuff off then we'll put the parts back on and do some more oiling and so forth um, I usually put three coats of wax or more final on the end so if this is the first moisturizing for Coco after she's had her bath. And this is like a protective, protective coating. Mm-hmm. Along the end of the shaft here and the threads. Mm-hmm. Then the last place I want you to get to is up inside here where these shafts come down. Let's see if I can get a little light here. Get a better better look in there. You see where these shafts are coming down from the top? You can see I got some oil on there, so I want to get some more oil on those. Like that. Get all the way up there. And these steel screws, bearing bearing ends. Get it all up in there. Get a nice little coating of oil on all of that. Okay. So once we've got our light coat of oil, we've got our grease. You can you can go over the grease again. Put a little more on, wipe off any excess. We'll be doing this again and cleaning everything up. But, you know, we've got it protected now. And it's actually turning quite quite smoothly already. Mm -hmm. And then I might put a little bit more in those little holes. Trying to 
fill them up with fresh oil and drive out any moisture that's still in there. <laughs> I, I turn this up and send a drop down inside that uh, regular feed regulator lever or the stitch length lever and if you look inside there's a slide block for that you'll see you might get your paintbrush in there or a drop of oil on that mm -hmm. and if you want to get some more access to those shafts those vertical shafts you know you can sneak in here you're not going to be able to see in the camera but when you're doing it yourself and there's a steel a shiny shield steel shaft that comes down uh, from the arm any place you see steel in there get a little coat of oil on that okay you'll be happy you did and just going to take a look up here on the hook area and the feed throw out and be rare to see any rust there but I'll put a little bit of oil on that and on the throw out knob and underneath the lever mm -hmm. then we're going to do the we're going to do the nose here and a, a real uh, light coating on the needle bar and stuff. But get in here as best as you can with your oil brush. Put a nice coating of oil on, on all the steel that you can get to. The crank back there, tension release lever. Pressure bar lifted lever. Now I'm going to switch to the uh, tri flow and I'm going to put a couple drops down in the top. Let's see, in the, let's see how I can do this and let you see. Down the pressure bar lifter push pin. So it goes in there. Back on the swivel screws for the tension release lever and the lifter. Okay. At the top of the pressure bar bushing, so it'll go down into the bushing. And again, this would be a little over oiling. This is a lot more than you'd normally put for maintenance. But then we want to do the top of the needle bar bushing. Okay. And then we're going to turn that shaft, get that needle bar up there, and we're going to put a little bit more oil, and get that down in the bushing, okay? And then following the uh, instruction manual that I'll put a link to, there's several little oil points up here. And in all those swivels and bearings and stuff, use your use the best oil you can. And the needle bar connecting crank here. And get that all oh, get it up and get moving and covered with oil and any moisture driven back out. Now this has been a very successful technique this whole pre-treat wash dry and oil has been very good to me over the years then we're also gonna come down and put a coat of oil on the needle bar and the, the needle holder presser bar the bushing bearing thread cutter Put that needle bar up and do a little bit up here on the top.
you can see I'm overdoing it a little bit, but we'll get all that excess out of there. It's okay. You don't want to leave it this over oil because it's just going to soak up dirt and lint and stuff. But to get some on here now is a very good idea. Now I never oil anything about the tension unit because it's to create tension, right? <laughs> So if it's, if it's oily, the thread's going to slide right through it, and you won't get your tension. And uh, you shouldn't have any problems. I prefer you take it all off and clean it. And I might do that um, later in the series, but I'm trying to do the abbreviated cleaning and degreasing for you. Mm -hmm. So... You'll see I've dripped some oil on here and things like that. Not worried about that. I've got every bearing and bushing and I can find, according to the manual, all lubed up. Fresh coats of grease on the gear. It's too much. It's sloppy, you know. But but uh, I can take off the excess. See, after all this turning, probably the excess is going to show up here. See how, see how that? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to leave that on there. It's just going to make a big mess. So you can come back and clean up all that extra overflow. If you got so much it's coming off, then you got more than enough on the gear. You can get down at the top of that lower gear because it tends to set there too. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Shiny and clean. Hee-hee. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where's my... I'm going to put a little drop here in the tinch, the bottom winder spindle. Just a drop or two there is more than enough. But I'll spin it around, spread it, make sure. Then, see what else have I forgotten here? Let's do the feed dog. Mm -hmm. Let's get a little coat of get a little coat of oil on that light coat here. That's all steel too. Mm -hmm. Any steel, get some oil. Any gear, get some grease. Turn that on a little bit. And this is aluminum, but I put a little coat of oil on it just to make sure it's going to operate smoothly. Oh, I didn't sew that. Sorry. I was going to say this: the thumb, the thumb nut uh, presser for the presser bar. It's aluminum; doesn't need oil. But at a time like this, I put a little bit on just to work it back and forth and make sure it's going to operate smoothly for the owner. I think you got the idea. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the shafts that go from the top to the bottom. And you can access them from the bottom and from the side where you took out the wiring. Okay, you can even lay it on its back and put a flashlight in here and go in from the bottom. And then move the flashlight to the bottom and go in from here. And you'll, you'll be able to access everything with a brush like that. And get a nice, you just want a nice coating of grease on the gear. And a nice coating of oil on anything else that's steel. Take an oil rag later and wipe off the excess stuff, but but no problem. Okay. Coco takes a bath. Coco, sorry, Coco takes a shower. <laughs> Blow dry and moisturize. Excellent. Very excellent. So we'll go over and check everything in the next video and uh, wipe off any excess oil and 
and things like that and check and see if there's any little dirty spots that we need to to tune up I see I still got a little rough spot from that darn adhesive so I'll have to work on that but the major degrease wash dry and conditioning moisturizing is all done thank you check me next time for the further adventures of Coco goes to the spa a Singer Model 301A rehab lots to go take care I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair and send him on his way get the picture